Hey, I'm back to review, recap, episode 9 of Bel Air, alright? We have reached the end of the season already. The show hadn't even been back on a month yet, I, I believe. So, you know, last episode, Amir overdosed. I'm thinking, they're thinking she, the coke she had, um, was laced with something. Because, you know, coke is a stimul, a stimul, how do you say it? Not stimulative, but a stimulant. Coke is a stimulant, so it doesn't make you drowsy and want to go to sleep. So that's how she ended up falling in the pool. She was out of it, right? So Carlton takes it out on Will, blames it on him, saying that ever since he's been here, all this stuff's been going on. And, you know, while watching it, I was getting aggravated with Carlton, but... When stuff happens, a lot of times people just have to blame someone, and I think that's what he was doing. He was like, well, it's all your fault, blah, blah, blah. Even though she was the one that lied about having sisters dying on different days and um, all this. And also remember that she's been in rehab multiple times, so this is this is a really big thing with her. So they get into it, Will and Carlton get into it, and then Viv, Viv and Phil sit them down, have a talk. Carlton snitches on Will, which I feel like he was going to do that anyway eventually. Um, you know, take the heat off of him about Will knowing that Jazz wasn't the one that burned the thing because he was there and all that, right? I knew that was going to happen. I just, for a second... Carlton went back to me, in my opinion, to being that Carlton we saw in season one that just totally hated Will. He was a total a double -S hole. Nobody liked him. I think maybe it was, what, season two or the end of season one. He had some redeeming qualities. But, yeah, for a minute, he went back to that Carlton, right? Then Lisa got mad at Will. Like, why is everybody mad at Will? You know? Um, I didn't get that. So, I would feel, I feel like in this episode, the, there's three big things. Frederick and Jeffrey, Penelope, them, Hillary and Jazz, and then the whole Will, Jazz, um, jail thing, right? So we're going to get into Frederick. Now, Frederick, he's still, uh, I don't know what he, it, does anyone know how old Frederick is? Is he a teenager or is he grown? Because he, he, he moves like someone who doesn't know anything. Like, please tell me he's, you know, 16 or something because he's out there shooting dice in the alley. You know, he was doing that drag race and stuff and placing bets and stealing people's money. Um, so he got beat up in this episode. He comes home, you know, Jeffrey's trying to reason with him. You know, he's trying his best, and it's like, dude, you left. Anybody that knows about London, well, you know what? Let me roll that back. Not just London, but every major city, I don't care how rich it is in some parts, every major city has a ghetto, a quote-unquote bad part, poverty-stricken part violence gangs all that right so i'm assuming either he was in in it's 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 looking like he wants to be like that because jeffrey was like that back in the day i'm not even sure he grew up like that when he was in london but anyway he wants to be whatever a gangster so bad and jeffrey and penelope are trying to talk some sense to him he really ain't listening um, so I'm going to stay on this Jeffrey thing, right? So, you know, just a little backtrack, you know, Penelope is staying with Frederick and I think they're all staying with Jeffrey right now because Jeffrey's really trying to, ever since he's come into Frederick's life, his, the organization he used to run with back in the day knows where they are now. He's no longer in hiding like when he came to the U.S., so him and Penelope are walking, and there's this G-Wagon. I think it's a G-Wagon. 
correct me if I'm wrong, creeping up. And, you know, Jeffrey's so smooth with it. I knew he, he knew it was there when he was like, look, you either going to keep walking and take me to where they want you to take me or you're going to follow my lead. So then she tell after they lose the G-Wagon, she tells him that they said the money that he gave OG Jeffrey from Fresh Prince, the money he gave him, they wasn't, they didn't care about that. They want him back in the organization because that's why he paid, what was Jeffrey's name in this, OG Jeffrey? I think it was Roman or something like that. We're going to call him Roman on this video, all right? So remember he paid Roman that money to like, look, I can't, I can't get back into that. Just give him all this. Well, that wasn't enough for him. So they tell him Penelope, look, we need to talk to him. So she had mentioned to him, why don't all three of us just go on a run, right? Jeffrey brushed that off. Um, but he's either going to have to go back to this organization or they're going to come after Frederick because... Frederick getting beat up was actually them, not some random, you know, people he owed money to or something like that. So we're going to get back into that in the next episode review because that's where that comes back into play, right? So Jazz gets out of jail. Hillary and Will are there to greet him and everything. So Miss Yolanda, the um, counselor lady, she comes in and, you know, kind of cock blocks a little bit, you know, and she kind of giving Hillary the side eye. Can someone tell me if him and her are together? Because I thought they were just like cool or something. But she's acting like they're like together. Because remember um, when LaMarcus was in a hospital and Jazz came to check on Hillary, he was with some other girl. So I don't know what's going on with him and this Yolanda girl. I know they're cool. They've been knowing each other a long time. But the way she was looking at Hillary and all that. So Hillary goes to his place unannounced. And basically tells him, look, you know, we're not out of each other's systems. Let's have a night together. Now, when I saw this part, I thought she meant let's have sex one last time. And I was like, oh, my God, Hillary, you are not engaged. Going to get married in a week talking about you going to screw your ex. That's what I was thinking. But basically, it was just a night of them chilling, which... People can still consider that cheating because I'm pretty sure she didn't say, hey, LaMarcus, I'm going to go over to my ex-boyfriend's house and, you know, he going to lay on my thigh and we're going to talk and smoke and just chat and blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? So that's still a slippery slope within itself. And I'm definitely team jazz. Um, I feel like LaMarcus is a good guy, but you can, it's, it's, it's hard because it's like, she comes from money, so it's not like she needs needs Lamarcus's money. But with her being an influencer, the optics look better, I guess, for her to be with this ball player because they're both like a power couple. But when it comes to chemistry, her and Jazz have that all the way. You see what I'm saying? So you got to make the choice that's best for you. So, da, da, da. so uh, Amira doesn't show in this episode, but she gets talked about because, you know, we're going off of her overdosing. And Carlton goes to check on her and he was like, well, I know this is a hard time of year for you, you know, because some mis <laughs> I'm sorry, Amira, your sister, Amira's sister died. So his her mama tells him that Amir didn't have a sister, which I, I figured that. You know what I'm saying? But he does find out the origin of her addiction. She was in a car wreck. The other person died. She got addicted to pain uh, killers, which that's a lot of people that are on heroin. I'm not going to say most because I don't know the statistics like that. But a lot of people that are on this fentanyl, fentanyl and heroin, it starts from having surgery, pain meds, you get addicted, a doctor's only going to give you so much, then you turn to street drugs. So that also is a slippery slope. It's, it's very scary because it's like you have any kind of surgery, you don't, you want to relieve that pain, but you don't want to become a junkie because of it, you know? So I do have empathy for people like that. Um, still don't care for Amira though. 
uh, I feel like she caused just a bunch of drama in his life. So we, we have this one scene, I didn't make notes of it, but I'll talk about it briefly, where they go to the, not AA meeting, but I'm going to call it AA, like, you know, where like people that are like addicted to stuff meet and talk, right? That scene was weird to me because they all were there talking about Amira, Amira as if she was dead. Like, y'all are acting like this girl overdosed and died. I just thought that scene was weird. And in that scene, Carlton says that he almost relapsed. He had bought some Coke, but he didn't do it which I'm glad he did because I was like oh my god I just knew he was gonna relapse mess with that girl so I'm glad I was wrong on that but yeah someone explain that scene so Will tells the DA Lisa's daddy that he knows about this the whole situation and all that now they said he was there I didn't know he was there I, th I know there was that scene where he had the ski mask I thought he was going to go, but I didn't know he was there. Can somebody clear that up for me? Uh, excuse me. But uh, Uncle Phil lets him know that he actually won't be doing jail time, but there will be some kind of consequences. So I was on the edge of my seat a few episodes ago because I'm like, how is this arson situation going to go? Jazz is in jail. Like, how is all this going to go? But Will said he was going to do whatever he had to do to get Jazz's, Jazz's um, charges dropped. And uh, so who knows, the guy that committed the arson, I don't know if he's going to be like in going to jail or not. They didn't mention him too much. And it ends, you know, they still have that black cess thing going on, right? So Will was able to find a new investor. Come to find out. The investor is the father of Drew. Now, if you remember Drew, Drew was the AWS hole in like season two. He had to be in season two. It's only three seasons, so season two. The one that Carlton beat down because he was just, you know, being him. And he's still his a-hole itself in this, you can tell. So I, I want to see how this is going to go because that's their only investor right now. So we shall see. I did watch uh, episode 10, so I will be doing a review on that coming up. This episode was cool. Like I said, the only scene I really didn't understand was that whole um, AA meeting scene. Because they made it seem like she had died. It was just like, I don't know. Maybe they felt the need to talk about it and what have. Uh, my deal with Frederick, I... Okay, for those of you that may be too young, back in like the 90s, the whole gangster thing was like kind of in. And I thought we were kind of trying to move away from that. But I don't know how it is across the pond. I don't know people that are in other countries look at um, Americans or especially black Americans in a way where they're like, you know, it's all about being in the hood, gangster and all that stuff. But, uh... Jeffrey and Penelope had to sit Penelope had to sit him down. I want to know what Jeffrey was into. We we need some we need a little bit more backstory. Like Jeffrey, were, were you in a cartel or something? Like, this is really deep, okay? But anyways, y'all, shout out to my subscribers, man. Shout out to shout out to you who are not subscribed, but you know you can. Just hit that button for me. Like and comment and let me know what you think about this episode. I always respond to comments. I'm curious to know, what do you think, all right? Peace and blessings to you all. Until next time.